All right, so this is the explanation for when the pigs fly lab. So the first thing you need to do, so notice I drew a triangle up here at the top of the screen. Um, our triangle is going to be able to help us figure out the angle. So if we know that the length of the string was about one meter, and that when we, hypothetically, when we measured the radius that of the circle the pig was making, right, that rate, that's a horrible circle, uh, the radius was 0.6. So knowing that, this length right here is 6, this one's 1. So using the sine over opposite, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse trig function, that's going to be sine theta equals to 0.6 times, or divided by 1. Um, so 0.6 divided by 1 is just 0.6. Um, what you'll notice though is I had to do an inverse trig function. So if you're not familiar with the inverse trig function, sine inverse right? That's able to give you the angle if I give you a ratio. So 0.6, right, is a ratio. So if you take the inverse sine of that, it'll give you the angle, right? So how far in the circle you are. Um, so by taking the inverse sine of both sides, your signs cancel out on this side, but you're still left with the inverse sine of 0.6. So to get that in your calculator, you want to hit second, and then sign, okay? Um, if you need a graphing calculator, there's plenty of apps on Google Play and on the iTunes store, whatever it's called, uh, that will let you do all the function of graphing calculator for free, all right? I have one on my phone now because it's just a little bit easier to have to experience what you guys are experiencing, but either way, uh, you can be you you will be able to do this for free if you find the app okay um now once we have the angle which is 36.87 that'll come back in later uh we want to draw the free body diagram for the pig on the conical pendulum so if you notice my free body diagram is right here okay so we have tension and we have fg so tension and force of gravity are not equal and opposite Right. Therefore, you have some component forces for tension. So the component force for tension that is overcoming gravity would be your TY force. So TY would be straight up right there. Right. And then TX would be going in this and in, into the circle. So the TX force is going to be our centripetal force in this case. Because if you notice, that force right there is pointed towards the center of our circle our pig is making flying around. All right, so if that's the case, we need to find Tx. But in order to find Tx, we got to do some stuff to that. So let's break down the components of this. So, of course, this is the correct free body diagram. If, there, if you were asked to draw a free body diagram on the exam in this scenario, that would be your correct drawing. Do not draw force components, okay? This next force, this, this next FBD, is drawing the components with gravity. Okay, so don't draw this one on the exam, draw this one, but this one will help you be able to figure out what forces counteract, which forces do we need. So moving on from here, our component diagram shows that TY and FG are opposing each other. And since the pig's not falling on the ground, right, we can assume that TY and FG are equal. Right, and if you want to break it down, you can. I broke it down right here. So on this side, you have the sum of the forces in the y direction equals to ty minus fg equals to zero. So I added fg to both sides, and sure enough, ty equals to fg, just like we stated. Um, and remember, fg is not just the acceleration of gravity, it's m times g, where m, remember we said earlier, m was 0.15 kilograms, and G was 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? G is not going to change unless we're on a different planet. So TY would be equal to MG. So 0.15 times 9.8 gives us TY equals to 1.47. So why does that matter? Well, that matters because we needed this triangle right, to be able to figure out TX. So that's our component triangle for tension. So tension 
the, the total tension, the actual tension on the rope is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Your TY is the vertical component, the one we just solved, and TX is going to be our centripetal force, the side we care about. So if our angle is this angle, right, and we need this side and this side, this is your opposite, this is your adjacent. So we're actually, we actually don't even need the tension in the rope to be able to figure this out, right? Because if we know TY is equal and opposite to FG, we can use tangent of opposite over adjacent to figure out the uh, TX. So tangent of theta equals to TX divided by TY. If I rearrange this solving for TX, I'll just divide by TY, or excuse me, multiply by TY on both sides, and I end up with this equation. So TX equals to TY times tangent of theta. We know that TY, we solved for that up here, right? And TX, we solved way up there. The angle, right, is 36.87. So if I multiply the TY by tangent of 36.87, my TX force is 1.10 newtons. Now, TX we said was centripetal force, and we know that centripetal force equals to MV squared over R. So if we know that, if we just set TX equal to FC, and then FC equals to this, we can figure out the velocity, because our velocity is right there. So I broke it down a couple different ways. So if you want to look at this section, this kind of breaks down a little bit better. Um, I just wrote the general equation here. So in this section, you start off with our assumption that Tx is Fc, right? So this is true. So if that's true, then we can just set it directly equal to one another. So I multiply by R on both sides. Then I divide by my mass. So multiply by R, divide by my mass. And I took the square root of V on both sides. Taking the square root, I end up with this general equation, either this one or this one, doesn't matter. Both of those are the same. All right, I did plug it in right here as well. So you would take the square root of the Tx, which was 1.1, right? And I'd multiply that by R, which is 0.6. So R came back to us, right? We used it at the beginning, and we don't get to use it at the end again. Um, and you're going to divide by the mass, which was 0.15, okay? 0.15. I know that doesn't look like a 5, but it's definitely a 5, okay? So that is your equation. You shouldn't end up getting about 2.1 meters per second. Um, I think the hard part about this problem is just having to use some of these trick functions. I know you guys know these concepts. The centripetal part, centripetal force part may be a little bit new. Um, but the tangent, I, I get it. This this part was not abundantly clear when we, when my regular honors class went through it, um, along with this part. Okay, we usually don't get to inverse sine until later in the semester in uh, regular physics. So I, I get it if that's new. Um, that comes up sometimes. So we have to be able to take the inverse sine. Um, don't forget how to draw free body diagrams. Um, I will say it looks like my FBD here looks a little bit incorrect because the T and the FG look similar. So in all reality, this would be more of an accurate FBD, right? So don't be confused. T and FG here are not equal, right? I did say that here. So if I were to draw it incorrectly like this on the exam but had this statement here, I believe that they would not count off points. Okay, so if you're ever in doubt, make sure that you, you let it be known that it's not equal and opposite. All right.